गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हेमल्टोन इन ग्राफ्स फर्स्ट रिकॉल दैट इन द लास्ट क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग आइलेरियन ग्राफ्स सो वेयर वी आर लुकिंग फॉर ए क्लोज ट्रेल फॉर अ सर्किट पासिंग थ्रू ऑल द एजेस नाउ इंस्टीड ऑफ पासिंग थ्रू ऑल द एजेस नाउ वी आर ट्राइंग टू लुक फॉर अ साइकिल पासिंग थ्रू ऑल द वर्टिसेज इट मीन्स दैट इन आइलेरियन ग्राफ्स वर्टिसेज कैन बी रिपीटेड but there was no repetition of edges in this case we are not going to allow the repetition of vertices so let's consider the example if we see the first graph you can say that we can start with any vertex and we can come back to the same vertex while covering all the vertices in the second graph if we start with the first one then i cannot reach back to the same vertex while covering all the vertices and with no repetition of vertices last one none of the above two cases are possible so it means that if a graph has a path that include every vertex exactly once while ending at the initial vertex then we say that the graph is hamiltonian graph it means the graph has a hamiltonian cycle so it was introduced by william hamilton which introduced a puzzle a voyage round the world so in this puzzle there were 20 vertices and they were labeled as different cities the object of the puzzle was to start at a city travel along the edges visiting other 19 cities exactly once and end up at a first city so this is how the concept of hamilton or hamiltonian circuits and cycles came to the picture so let g be a graph then a path that includes every vertex in g is a hamiltonian path of g so if i consider the following graph you can see that it does not have a hamiltonian path or a hamiltonian cycle whatever you do you cannot have a cycle or a path without repetition of vertices path is there you can start with 2 1 3 4 but from 4 you cannot come back to 2 so cycle is not there so a cycle in g that includes every vertex is a hamiltonian cycle and if a graph contains a hamiltonian cycle we call it a hamiltonian graph so let's move to the first question which says that for the following graph check if there exist a hamiltonian cycle it's a very interesting exercise please do try by yourself and then it can be observed that the following graph has a hamiltonian cycle and therefore it is hamiltonian few quick questions the first one is is every hamiltonian graph connected of course yes because if it is hamiltonian then there is a cycle passing through all the vertices and this means that all the vertices are connected the next one is is cycle graph hamiltonian yes all cycle graphs are hamiltonian because they itself are the hamiltonian cycles is complete graph hamiltonian complete graph recall that where each vertex is adjacent to all other vertices this is k5 so you can see that it always have a hamiltonian cycle so it's hamiltonian is complete bipartite graph k n comma n so where m and n are same is hamiltonian again yes consider k 2 2 or k 3 3 so this is k 3 3 so you can start with any vertex let's say you start with 1 you can go to 2 
फ्रॉम टू यू कैन गो टू थ्री थ्री टू फोर नो लेट्स ड्रॉ इट अगेन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सो फ्रॉम वन यू गो टू फोर फोर टू 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 फाइव फाइव टू थ्री थ्री टू सिक्स एंड फ्रॉम सिक्स यू कैन ट्रेवल बैक टू वन सो इन दिस केस वी आर लुकिंग फॉर सी सिक्स विच एज इजीली एग्जिस्ट एंड देयर फोर यू कैन ऑब्जर्व इन दर केसेज ऑल्सो दैट अ कंप्लीट बाई प्रोटाइट ग्राफ के एन कोमा एन इज ऑलवेज हेमल्टोनियन एट द सेम टाइम इफ यू ट्राई के एम कोमा एन यू विल ऑब्जर्व दैट इट इज नॉट हेमल्टोनियन consider k 2 3 1 2 three, four, five. if we start from 1 and go to 3 then 3 to 2 2 to 4 and 4 to 1 so this vertex 5 has not been visited so complete bipartite graph is hamiltonian when m is equal to n otherwise not why not we will prove it in the next slide so next is to look for necessary and sufficient condition for a graph to be hamiltonian in case of eilerian graph it was very easy you just need to look for the degree of all the vertices if it is even then the graph is eilerian otherwise not but in case of hamiltonian graph it's not very straightforward but before that observe that in case of eilerian graph we have to cover all the edges and therefore if the graph has multiple edges or loops they cannot be neglected but in case of hamiltonian graph since we have to visit all the vertices and therefore loops and multiple edges can easily be neglected which means that to prove the result related to hamiltonian graphs we always assume the graph to be simple and connected if the result holds for simple and connected graph the same result would hold once we introduce loops or multiple edges so first theorem says that if g is a simple hamiltonian graph then for each subset of the vertex set the number of components of g minus s g minus s means you delete all the vertices that belongs to set s is at most the cardinality of set s first let's understand the statement of the theorem by an example so if we consider this graph we have already seen that this graph is hamiltonian in the first slide let's assume the set s to be a b c d e f g with seven vertices if i delete these seven vertices please do try to delete by yourself then the claim is the number of the components would be always less than equal to 7 so after deletion we got four components 1 2 3 and 4 now let's go back to this statement <clears throat> so we are going to prove this statement but before that we need to understand that how this statement is useful to us so this is a necessary condition and therefore if we write down its negation then it says that if the number of components is greater than the cardinality of s then g is not hamiltonian okay and this is why the result is very important so the above theorem provide a necessary condition for a graph to be hamiltonian that is if we can find a subset s of the vertex set with more than mod s components of g o minus s then g is not hamiltonian let's see a very simple example complete bipartite graph k 2 3 is not hamiltonian why so first draw k 2 3 1 2 3 4 
I need to find a set S which should be the subset of the vertex set. So I take it 1, 2. Its cardinality is 2. Now if I delete the set S, so G minus S is 3 isolated vertex. It means G minus S has 3 components which is greater than the cardinality of set S. And therefore, from above result, this graph is not Hamiltonian. Let's quickly check are the following graphs Hamiltonian. Please try to use the above result. So for the first one, you can see this inner ring with 6 vertices. If you delete these 6 vertices, so for these 6 vertices, cardinality of S is 6, then after its deletion you will see that this is 1 component, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and middle one is 1, 7. So there are 7 components more than the cardinality of S. G minus S has 7 component and therefore the graph is not Hamiltonian. Similarly in this case you can choose this S with cardinality 4 and if you delete it then the remaining graph has 5 components again it is not Hamiltonian. So let us quickly see the proof of this result. Let us assume this graph which is Hamiltonian and it has a Hamiltonian cycle as follows. If I choose S to be vertices 1, 2 and if I, this is G, this is Hamiltonian cycle C, so my G minus S would look like a connected graph with one component or K of G minus S is one. But if I delete these two vertices here, then K of C minus S is two. After deleting it, you will have the following graph with two components. It means that the number of the components in G minus S is always less than equal to number of components in C minus S. Agreed? Because G minus S always have same or more edges than C minus S. And when there are more edges, it is likely that those edges connect the components. So in C minus S there are two components but G minus has an extra edge and therefore this extra edge connect these two components and the number of two components get reduced to one. So both have the same number of the vertices but G minus S has always less than is always greater than equal to more edges than C minus S and therefore the number of the components in G minus S is always less than equal to number of components in C minus S. And next observation is number of components in C minus S is always less than equal to the cardinality of S. Again can be easily observed. For example, if I consider C6, initially if I take S is equal to 1, then the number of the components in G minus S or C minus S is equal to 1. If I take S is equal to 1, 4, number of components are 2. Even if I take S is equal to 1, 2, then the number of components is 1. If I take S as 1, 3, 5, so after 1, 3, 5, there would be 3 isolated vertex and therefore the number of components would be 3. And this is the maximum number of the components, n by 2. If you have Cn, cycle of length n, it could have maximum n by 2 components. And in each case, you can see that the cardinality of S is always either equal to or greater than equal to the number of the components in C minus S. So with these two logics, 
I can conclude that the number of components in G minus S is less than equal to the cardinality of set S. So that's all from today's class. In the next class, we will see necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of Hamiltonian graphs. Thank you.